Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, my name is Lorena Aguirre and I post on my YouTube channel every Monday and Saturday. So please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. And let's go ahead and jump in. Hello you guys, welcome, welcome to the channel. I'm super excited to have you guys here. We are going to be doing my client's set of nails she wanted to do gel x we've been doing gel x on here for almost a year now and i i'm here for it i love the gel x the tips that we are going to be using today are the they are the natural stilettos in short and I really, really love these. She wanted to make sure that they weren't super, super long for work. And then we were going to go ahead and round them out just because she didn't want them pointy and poking through her gloves. Um, but yes, you guys, her nails, they came out so cute. And I went ahead and pushed back all her cuticles. And I am just going to go ahead and clip them down real short. Just because I like the way it looks from underneath. I don't like there to be um, a big old long tip. Especially when they grow out. I don't like to see the undersides of the nail. And my clients usually don't like that either. Usually if they do want me to keep it long, of course, I will go ahead and do so. But it's only if they ask me not to cut them. Unless they have like super, super long nails and they were all pretty much even, then I will go ahead and ask. But if they're pretty short like this client right here, usually I'll, I end up just cutting them just because I know how she likes her nails. Um, but yeah, so I am going to go ahead and go in with this fine sanding band. You guys already know Metacore sanding bands are Metacore. I think that's how you pronounce it. But these are the bomb. I love these. You guys, if... Anything that you are looking for um, that are my staple products, I highly recommend checking out my link tree just because everything is located in there. And you don't need to apply a ton of pressure when you are doing this. Cuticle prep is definitely, definitely something that is very important. Even pushing back your, everything from pushing back your cuticles to prepping the nail beds and from using my cuticle bits I feel like it's highly important and even cutting the cuticles too and making sure they are up and out of the way For you guys and for this part after I had prep I always tell them do not touch their fingernails and things like that just because any oils if they come in with a ton of lotion on or their fingertips are just naturally oily it will end up having premature lifting and you don't want that you want their nails to stay as long as possible so now I'm going to go ahead and go in with this cuticle bit you guys know I love 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 this cuticle bit definitely recommend again check out my link tree everything is in there if you guys can't find it there I will definitely make sure I am linking everything down below I do have some discount codes as well and they are all linked down below so definitely check those out as well All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and take this little brush out and I'm going to go ahead and remove all that dust from her cuticles and all that just so it's up and out of the way. And then I'm going to go ahead and get ready for my dehydrator and primer. The dehydrator that I love is OPI. I know some people, they will make their own. So if you guys are in Tech and you guys are looking to save your money, I hear they do the same thing. I have yet to try it just because this is the method that works for me. And I guess... In a way, I am kind of afraid of, like, what if I do end up, like, changing it for a week and all those clients have problems with lifting. But I know some really no nail techs, they do um, make it to where you're actually able to just 
make it yourself and save that money just because dehydrator I do feel like I kind of go through it quite a bit um but now I'm going to go ahead and prime the primer the protein balm that I am using is from Young Nails Young Nails is a bomb when it comes to primer and even for a long time I used their, I still even use it from here and there, but I use their monomer. Their monomer is the bomb as well. I love their monomer. And even their clear acrylic, I was using that for a while too, but sometimes with the air bubbles I felt like that was something that I was battling against. I think I might try and use it again and see how their clear is working because I still have a ton of ton of clear from them but yeah so now I'm just gonna go ahead and prep the inside of my tips you guys can see over there to the left of me I have all of my tips out on the desk I already had and pre-sized her um, something that I want to get into doing is actually prepping my clients tips before they come asking them what shapes that they want to do so I could have their shapes ready for them just because I do feel like this takes a little bit of time doing and when I could just hurry up and get to work and do all that I feel like that would actually be great for me so I think for future reference I am going to be getting her tip sizes and things like that one of my clients I had already actually did that so I could get her stuff going and she could be in and out a lot faster and I can just end up doing that while I'm watching TV or things like that. So, yeah. So, I think definitely for sure I want to start doing that is prepping all my tips. But I know some people, they will prep their whole box of tips before their client comes. But my worst fear is that what if the box opens and all of the tips fall on the floor and I am unable to find out where they go. And it's a big waste of the whole box of tips because I don't know what size they are. So yeah, that's like kind of something that I'm battling with. Let me know if you guys are a Gelix artist and that is what you guys do because I hear that actually saves people a lot, a lot, a lot of time. But now I'm going to go ahead and do a base coat. I am going to be using the original Extend Gel. And I don't really use the Sensitive Extend Gel on any of my clients. I kind of mainly use that on myself. Or if a client tells me she's very, very sensitive, um, I will go ahead and do a test one on her nails as well and see if that is something that works out for her. Alright guys, now I'm going to go ahead and put that in for the 60 seconds. The Extend Gel, I don't know if you guys feel this way too, but when it is brand new, it is the bomb. It applies so nicely, but I feel like sometimes, I don't know if it's like I left it out and open too long or what, but I feel like my other bottles, I feel like they went bad so fast. So honestly, I feel like this was actually like great for me. But getting a new bottle, just because I do feel like they get so sticky and sappy and I feel like it's a lot more harder to work with. But I know there's some brands that are like a little bit of a thinner viscosity and I even seen, I don't know if you guys have seen it too, if I'm able to find the video I'll save it and I'll input it into this video. But it is a putty, it is a putty extend gel almost. It's not technically extend gel. It's named something else, but it is to attach the gel -X. And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys. Like, it is so crazy. It looks so easy. Um, so, I think I actually might try that out. Just because I love the way it seems. And the application seemed a lot easier than even trying the extend gel. So, I might try that out. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this light. I know you guys were asking me where this light was from. It's from my local nail supply, um, Montage Nail Supply. But they are all sold out, you guys. If I do find another one or something similar, I will try and link that down as well. But unfortunately, I have yet to find one on Amazon or anything that I could recommend you guys. But another dupe that I do use is the flash, or it's not a dupe because it doesn't have like the gooseneck lamp, but the other one that I do use is the flashlight and that kind of works well for me as well. I do like it having the little 
thing that goes up and over just because I do feel like I am actually able to to have it like where I need it and I feel like the flashlight sometimes I would have to have my thumb over it holding it down until I was able to pick up my flashlight and cure it down and hold it a certain way but it was kind of hard and sometimes I wouldn't notice that there was an air bubble so that is kind of why I steered away from the flashlight I feel like with a light like this with a gooseneck lamp I am able to see what I am doing but something to know when using this lamp is to keep your Gelex out of this area just because I do feel like maybe that's what have caused my extend gel to go bad is because this light it shines so much and it kind of like the light just goes where it wants because it's not low to something and if my extend gel is close to the edge of where the light is shining then it's more likely to go bad just because it will be curing the bottle as well so definitely make sure when you are working with any type of gel just keep it away from the light and things like that just because you don't want your product to go bad especially when this is like $24 a bottle you don't want it to go bad it hurts when it goes bad <laughs> but yeah you guys and that is what hurt tips look like now we're gonna go ahead and round these babies out just so they're not poking through her gloves and making holes in all that jazz um so I for this step since I don't have to shave a ton something that I do like to do is actually use one of these smaller files just because these smaller files when you are using these you end up saving so much more money than if you were to use one of your larger ones so highly recommend getting a small file and or you could even get um, a buffer a double-sided buffer that one side is 100 grit and the other one is 180 grit you could get that but I like using a harder surface when I am filing for shaping just because I do feel like it is more precise and it gets the shape that I want but I mean a buffer if you are used to that I mean maybe try that just so then you don't end up having to spend so much money while you're creating these sets and you could save a little money so this is a way that I learned that I could save money it is a little bit different using a file like this versus using the larger one so that's something to kind of get used to but in all honesty if it's saving you that much more money why not now I like to flip her hand around making sure that everything is looking uniform and that her nails are just on point. And then next I'm just going to go ahead and get my extend gel. I am using the Ariel's extend gel from Acrae. But before I go ahead and put that on I am just going to go ahead and buff on top and underneath the nail making sure if any of the filing left it kind of jagged at the edge it is going to go ahead and smooth all of that out the reason why you want to buff it is because if you end up leaving it shiny the gel sometimes two shiny surface surfaces they just kind of want to peel from each other so if you do all that work do the design and do everything and all that and then your artwork just ends up peeling off so you really don't want that you want to make sure that your work stays and it lasts for your client and the buffer that I am using it is an 80 or a 180 grit and it just smooths out everything and makes everything look so beautiful. Alright now I'm going to go ahead and seal the cuticle and make sure everything is nice and smooth around there and something that I do want to mention if you guys are going to be doing clear nails um, depending on your top coat I definitely wouldn't recommend buffing out the top coat just because if you're trying to get that clear super super clear effect I feel like you are able to get a better effect of that clear if you don't buff out the top coat. You could go around the cuticle and sew the cuticle, but I wouldn't really recommend buffing the whole entire nail just because I feel like the look of it isn't, I don't know, I don't really like the way it looks, honestly. But, and it kind of gives like, almost like it's not clear enough. It's like if you're looking for that glass, glass look, definitely don't recommend buffing the tops of it. If you're just putting a clear coat on top. 
But now I'm going to go ahead and seal this hand as well and making sure that it is nice and smooth and it blends into her cuticle and her natural nail. And this is a 5 in 1 bit. You guys could get these off of Amazon as well. I have these linked in my storefront as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and dust. I like to dust off the main parts of their fingers with a big fluffy brush and then sometimes get into it either with that small plastic brush or you even have that brush that you could go in with on like it's a little little fan brush that you put in your drill you could use that as well and that really helps in getting rid of that dust that gets stuck in the cuticle area now I'm going to go ahead and take off her cuticles her cuticles weren't too bad so you won't see me doing every single cuticle but and I wanted to push back her cuticle in a certain area because the gel was like sticking to it now I'm going to go ahead and dust once again getting those cuticles making sure that I'm very thorough All right, you guys, now I'm going to go ahead and go in with Ariel from A Play. And this one is so pretty, too. Um, it is a very, very, very light pink. It almost looks like a milk white, but with a hint of pink in it. And I like to use this to mimic the look of... To mimic the look of a... Colored acrylic, if you will. Um... But I like to do, definitely do two coats of it. I know some nail techs, they like to only do one. But me, I am a two coat person when it comes to this. It does kind of have a thicker effect to it. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint all of the tips. We are going to do a French tip. And we are not leaving them like this. I am just going to go ahead and go in with a... 3D brush in just a second and you guys will see that and I have my acetone on the side just so I could do all that but before I went ahead and applied the French tip I did go in and wipe down all of the nails with with alcohol just because um, with the extend gel it does have a very very sticky layer and sometimes it almost wants to bloom but not in a pretty way <laughs> So it's not something you could use for a gleaming gel, but I definitely recommend wiping that dispersion layer away just because your nails won't look all nice and clean and crisp. I'm using this 3D nail art brush from Montage Nail Supply, and this is really perfect for getting those real deep smile lines um, just because you're able to really, really get in there, especially with how tiny her fingers are. I felt like it got in there perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and use a liner brush. And I am going to go ahead and touch up those corners, making sure the lines look nice and crisp. And I want this French tip to be very, very deep. Even though a majority of the French tip is going to be covered because we are going to be doing Old English, like how you guys seen in the picture.
right now for the fun part we are going to be doing old english across the whole entire hand and it is going to be saying love um i'm super excited about this and it's so funny because one of my clients had or my client had mentioned to me that every time she comes and she lets me freestyle on her nails it's that week that she's getting a tattoo that's um similar to her nail art so i thought that was so funny and it's kind of cool in a way the way that it ended up syncing up like that but yeah um well i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys enjoy the nail art just because i love watching nail art and i'm probably sure you guys enjoy seeing it too so i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch Alright guys, I kind of wanted to go on here and show you guys the font that we were inspired by. But this is the font right here that I have for reference. So if you guys want to screenshot that or even just Google Old English font or Old English alphabet, you guys are able to see this and it will pop up right away. But it is like an Etsy design, I guess. But um, yeah, so this is what we were inspired by and this is what I was trying to make my Old English look like. And right here, you guys can see I'm going in with that same brush to kind of detail it a little bit and take off certain parts just to clean it up and make it look very nice and crisp. guys so I my camera accidentally cut out I need to get a second battery option just so then I don't end up having to worry about the battery dying just because if even if I do have it plugged in it just wants to die on me so I'm so so sorry um but I am gonna go ahead and create these cards if you guys seen any of my other tutorials you guys will see how I create them with a dotting tool and using a liner brush like this to bring them all together I wanted to do something nice and dainty and then we went ahead and did hearts on the other ones as well. And I do want to mention when I do the pink French tip, right after I'm done with that French tip, I want to go ahead and cure and before I apply the, the black Old English font on there. Just because I do feel like sometimes people, they don't think that you need to cure before putting a design on top of it, but again, it is layering. so. You guys, this is how it looked like, and now we're going to go ahead and put Tracy's Nails top coat on top of these. And in just a second, you guys will be able to see how beautiful they really came out. We did end up adding some black little hearts on here just to detail them a little bit. But this set, it was inspired by Fabi's Nails. And I just ended up adding the heart because I did see another nail tip, which I can't remember her name. She had actually did something similar, but she added hearts. I don't think Fabi, she added hearts. I think she added like stones at the bottom. But I thought they were so cute. And I didn't want to leave the thumbnail plain. So, of course, I had to go in and add something on them. Now, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the bottom of these nails, making sure that I didn't leave a bulk of product. And we are going to put them into the light. And I want to clean up the cuticle as well just in case but you guys this is the final look i hope you guys really enjoyed today's video please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to the channel and as always i'll be back with my videos bye